are the best Nigerian fiction writers? Yeah. Are they overseas? I'm thinking Chimamanda Adichie, I'm thinking Tejuko, I'm thinking uh, um, Elona Bila, I'm thinking even Pius, yeah. um, Pius Adesomi, yeah. and so a long list of yeah. superstar yeah. fiction well, writers who live overseas. I don't know about superstar. <laughs> I mean, apart from um, Chimamanda, I don't think there's any Nigerian superstar writer. I don't think there is. I mean, who, so who can, yeah, who can feed writer. off his or her writing? She's the only one. And maybe me, 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 me in Nigeria, who, who can feed off his writing? And I'll tell you why. You can't live off what you get from. I mean, if you publish a book in London, for instance, you know, you sell it for 12 pounds, you're going to get not one pound. If you're doing very well, maybe 50 cents from each book you sell. That's royalties. That's royalties. And you give an advance. So you have to do two books at least to pay off your first advance. So how many of them sell enough to pay off their advances? Very few. That, that's a fact. So very few writers in the world can live just on their writing. That's why you see everybody lectures. It's not because they want to lecture, but because they have to survive. That's why they write articles for the New York Times, write articles for Guardian, do reviews so that they can get extra income. Okay, which is how a writer should live. It was more of labor, labor of love, yes. really. So you, you do your novel, then on the front of that novel, people can call you to say, come and do this for us. On Friday, I got a call from a friend of mine about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, said, oh, there's a, a film in South Africa coming to Nigeria. They want to subtitle it in, in Pigeon. Can I do that? Okay, so I said, yeah, I could do it. I could do it. So he sent it to me on Friday night, Friday afternoon. I said, they want it on Tuesday. And I gave him my, my bill, and he said, okay, they will pay. Now, the money they're paying me is almost my monthly, I mean, you know, salary, you understand? So, and one is that, how many people would they ask to do it Friday and Tuesday and they would deliver? One round, four pages. Okay, very few of us can do that in Nigeria. And do it well. So, when people say writing doesn't pay, <clears throat> I think it's a complete lie. I'll tell you why. I mean, if they call me, call me and says, oh, there's something that happened, you know, there's a, a new award or a new prize, can I write it? And I'm on it. I will do it. Max three hours, four hours, I will do it. Very few people in Nigeria can do it because Nigerians, I mean, Nigerian writers are very good at acting like writers, but not writing. I mean, I'm saying with all, all sense of, I mean, you know, respect and responsibility. Very few people in Nigeria write. The, only, the person I look up to in Nigeria in terms of writing is audio for him because he's always writing. So he's producing something. The rest just say, oh, we are writers, so we drink beer, we wear the rare, you know, we act like writers, but we don't do anything. Okay, so I'm happy to say Otoni Khan is a commercial writer, you know. So I, I do film reviews, I do book reviews, you know, I write biographies. Nobody's saying you shouldn't do that. You can do it if you want, but they won't. <laughs> so they look at you and say, oh, he's making money off writing. I did not come to writing to, I mean, to be poor. That, that's the family. I could have been a doctor. I worked in banking, I worked in telecom, I left you to come and write because I felt that with my work ethic, I can make a good living from writing. Which is what you do. Yeah. Now, one of the ways you do that is by ghostwriting. Is that correct? Yes. Now, a lot of people criticize ghostwriters. Okay. What, what do you think about that? I, I, I think they're ignorant. Okay? I have a first degree in English literature, second degree in English literature. Both times I was best student in my class. I mean, class has, I mean, Helen Habila. So I'm not saying I was with idiots. Okay, so it's not as if this is something that's happening in Lagos. I've, I've been, I have that excellence from when I was a kid. So I studied for this, and till tomorrow, people are, are still arguing over who wrote Shakespeare's plays. Because, I mean, there, there are strong rumors that they were ghostwritten. Thank you. So if we can, if we can trace it back to Elizabethan times, okay, but, I mean, what I it's not new. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't start it. The fact is that people have lived. People have stories to tell. Very few people have the skills to tell these stories. If they go to people who have the skills to tell these stories and pay for it, what is wrong? Footballers earn $100,000, I mean, a week. So why shouldn't I earn 5 million naira to write a book, 10 million naira to write a book? Why shouldn't I? Uh, how about the criticisms on the books ghost written? I mean, um, somebody could say, hey, for example, hey, um, 
so so person didn't write that book himself. Mm -hmm. The book was ghostwritten. Yeah. Hence, the book lacks enough credibility. In terms of what do you mean by? Um, he didn't write it himself. Somebody wrote it for him. <laughs> so. So you think of I mean Obama writes his book. Why, I, mean, why but, I mean for Obama writes his book, but George Bush doesn't write his book by himself. Ninety percent of books written by celebrities in the West I mean, are ghostwritten. Yes. So so there's not there's it is. The tradition that that this back to antiquity, you know, so it's not as if it's starting today. So and then people like us who are, who God you know has blessed with the ability to do this, we should do it because people have a story to tell. So I'm not going to turn back Vangida because oh, I mean, because you don't, don't like him. <laughs> I want to hear his story. I mean, you know, before I started writing biographies for people, I didn't even like reading biographies. But if you want to know about Nigeria, about this country, how it got to where it is. You need to re read biographies and write them. I think that ghostwriters are very important. I mean, I've ghostwritten for many years, and I, I think that Nigeria needs more, more of ghostwriters because so many more stories need to be, to be told. Now, but how about, how about paid biographies, paid for biographies. Okay, I know you, you wrote um, the story of the cool DJ, Jimmy Jatt, um, which is a great book anyway. Now this is a paid for biography, is that correct? Yeah. What, what's your take on this? Now this is an autobiography because it's, it's, it's told in his own voice. Okay, so what happens is, Jimmy Jatt is, is a DJ, he's not a writer. Right, but he, he's, he's turning 50, I think, and he wants to do um, a big celebration to a rally. He's been five years in, in, um, in the music industry, and he says he wants to do a book. And of course, I mean, somebody calls us to, and then we, we say, okay, you tell your story. We we'll sit with you, 10, 12 sittings. You tell us your story. We we'll transcribe it. We we'll put it together in a way that is readable and enjoyable and exciting. And, and you pay for it. It's time. I mean, a lawyer bills you for his time. A consultant busy for his time. Why shouldn't a writer bill for his own time? I mean, it's what well, I don't understand. Um, T.Y. Bello takes a picture of you. You pay her four hundred thousand, um, a million naira, and then you say, I, "I should write a book for free." I don't understand it. <laughs> and so, I mean, that's what it is. You know, it's it's a job. Very few people can do what I do, so I should I should charge for it. There's value. I create value for people who need that value created for them, and then you pay for it. So it's it's a legitimate business. Yeah, one of one of the um, greatest ghostwriters in the world. Um, is Andrew Croft, um, who has written for so many great, uh, great um, accomplishers mm -hmm. in the West. I, I think ghostwriters are important for, for every society. Um, Tony, so your life is all about writing. Must yeah. be exciting. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, I have a PR company, which is also about writing. So we write speeches for MDs. You know, so um, I'll write an article for this day for free. But then that is where the MD will sit and say, who wrote this thing? Can you write one for me? So you see, so... Um, the the takeaway here is that people should begin to write and stop wanting to write. That is one. And then two, people assume that because some people make money from writing, then it happened overnight. But remember, I've been writing since I was 20. Professionally, since I was 20, I was in my second year when I got a job at Hints Magazine to write through Kaya Jala and Ruben Abati. And I've been writing since then. So that is 24 years of writing. So, and I've written for free. I wrote for free for Mr. Magazine. I wrote for free for Fame. I wrote for free for Hints. So, now people are paying me for it after 24 years, but I've tried now. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried. You know, it's not, I mean, it just that today. Yeah, I, I think another takeaway from this uh, is that, you know, there is always an economic angle to every talent. You know, um, somebody might be asking, how, how can I make money from writing? I mean, you've said it all here today. Uh, the, the, the best way to make money from writing is to read widely and then to write. Because people don't write. I mean, uh, see, sometimes I get called for jobs that I'm like, I'm too old for this kind of thing now. Mm -hmm. But they say, well, they've, they've checked around, nobody's able to deliver. And if they're able to deliver, they can't deliver to the time specified. So there's, there's a lot of work outside for very few people to do it. I mean, somebody from South Africa is calling Nigeria to get somebody to do pigeon translation. Nigeria. Everybody in Nigeria speaks pigeon. Okay? But then how many people can deliver between Friday and Tuesday? So you see where the issue comes in. Okay, so I think that that is basically where we need to begin to look at. 
my, my staff said to me on Friday that she wants to write, she's the editor of, uh, of Sabine News, but she said she wants to write a novel. And you know, how, what, what, what's my advice? I said, write it. I'm not gonna give you time off work to go write a novel. You have to find time to write it. If the novel is really pushing you to write it, you find time to write it. You know, so um, that's, that, that's what I think. I, I don't think that somebody will leave a banking job to write and then be sleeping at night. I mean, they'd be an idiot, you know? So um, you have to just find a way to, to make it happen. Hmm. Tony, now let me put you in a box. The yeah. box I like to put sure. a lot of people I interview. Who are your five favorite Nigerian writers? Well, it's, um, I don't like doing this, but I mean, you know, I mean, I, I really don't care. I'll, I'll tell you my, my best writers in Nigeria. Um, ben Okri. Ben Okri. Yeah, right? Um, Sefiata. Sefiata. Right? Chimamanda. Um, Lashonayin. Okay? Anthony Khan. 